everybody, it's Bill from MattTracker.com and welcome to this episode of Behind the Mask. Now in this episode, I'm not going to be doing the talking, uh, except for right now, but I'm uh, just introducing somebody new to the channel. Um, we did an interview not too long ago. I uh, want everybody to welcome David uh, to the channel. He's going to be helping us keep Mask alive by helping us cover the comics, which I don't have a lot of them, so it's hard for me to actually be able to review them and give them the justice that they deserve. So David's going to be talking about the variations of the comics, um, going into depth in some of the books, talking, you know, going just encompassing them in general. He also has good knowledge of other elements of Mask as well, and we'll probably time to time join forces. And but for right now, let's see what David has to offer in his first review of the channel. Uh, and with that being said. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe to help keep Mask alive. And David, it's all yours. Hey guys, this is David from MattTracker.com. I'm joining in the channel with Bill here. Um, if you haven't seen my previous interview I did with Bill, um, I'm going to be joining him to help cover with comic books and print media, and discussing a lot of the continuity that that and all that entails. So, um, a little bit of background about myself: I've been a lifelong Mask fan. Um, well versed in the cartoon, toy line, and comics. Um, pretty much read just about everything as far as I'm aware of the U.S. and U.K. English language comics. So, seen pretty much it all. And we're going to discuss some of this today. Um, one of the goals I want to do on the channel here is I really want to give some awareness out there for the comics. Most Mass fans are very much aware of the cartoon series, and the cartoon series is great. Um, I love the cartoon. It's amazing. Um, 75 episodes, seen them all m multiple times. Love them. So, the, I have nothing against the, co the cartoon, uh, but the comics are kind of interesting if you've never seen them. Um, for a long time before I even, when I first started getting into Mask again, I kind of never really left it, to be honest with you guys. Um, but for a time there, it was always tough because there was those 75 episodes and that was kind of it. I knew about the Toy Mini comics. And for a while there, I didn't realize that there had been U.S. released uh, publications from D.C. And then the Fleetway U.K. comic publication. So if you've never seen all the comics, if there are a bunch of new stories, new characters... A lot of the vehicles that never made it into the cartoon series made it into the comics in some shape or form. So things like the Adventure Packs and Laser Command, that's all in the comics. There's some you, exclusive comic characters. And if you really love these characters like I do, it's great to see them show up in, again in new adventures. Um, I basically found out about the Mass comic book from D.C. I went to a uh, local Ohio chain store called Mark's, and they were basically doing a lot of liquidation of comic books at one time, and there was a big bin of comic books. And I kind of glanced down, and I said, that's a Mass comic book. And I picked it up, and I was just amazed that there had been D.C. Mass comics. I never knew I was as a kid. This was in the early uh, 1990s, so I kind of dug around the bin. I found a few other issues. Um, over time, I basically amassed the entire U.S. mass comic run, um, and I was pretty happy with that. I always knew once I came in the online fandom that there had been comics elsewhere in the world, like the U.K., but in the early days, the early 2000s, those were kind of hard to come by. Um, I took a trip to the... Uh, to, to Ireland, and I purchased a bunch of UK comics there. And then from there, I basically scoured eBay and basically amassed a UK comic collection, which 
is a little bit difficult, but I think I have all the issues, so we're going to be going through that. Um, there's no definitive guide online, and Bill and I really want to change that. Um, I know uh, Scott Crawford has great mass comics blog, which he's worked really hard on. So he's a great guy. Love his stuff. Um, we really want to see kind of awareness of these comics and these stories and kind of get them back out in the fandom. So uh, without further ado, we're going to discuss a few comics today. We're going to keep it real simple. And we're going to start with three that I think everybody's kind of seen. <laughs> Uh, the mass mini comics that came with the toys. So these comics, I think, are probably the most well-read mass comics out there. They're pretty cool. Uh, they can package with the toys. Um, they usually feature a few agents and a few vehicles each. And we're going to start with the first one here: Flaming Beginnings. So this comic is, in my opinion, one of the most important. Mass comics out there. Um, the story basically goes, Miles Mayhem shoots down a plane over Boulder Hill containing an android. Matt and Bruce rush out to rescue this android, who's a spitting image of Matt's brother, Andy. Matt re relays the story of how Andy had helped to design the mass vehicles and masks, and they had all worked together with Miles Mayhem. Miles Mayhem betrayed Matt Andy, uh, they set up, he, Miles Mayhem set up a meeting. The Matt Tracker was late to this meeting. Ma Miles Mayhem had betrayed Andy, still don't have the plans, set the building on fire, and left Andy for dead. Um, Matt and Bruce eventually found out the ruse, get the android out of Boulder Hill, and the balance is the switchblade. Miles Mayhem is driven off. So This comic is the only North American telling of the mask origin. The cartoon did not have an origin story. The subsequent DC comic book series did not tell the origin of Mask. The only way you got the origin story was in this comic book. Um, it sort of ties in a little bit with the cartoon. There is a little bit of continuity you can kind of make comparisons to. Matt's brother's name is Andy. Um, in the cartoon, in the episode Green Nightmare, Matt Tracker's father is named Andrew. So it seems like they were... They kind of put the Andrew and the Andy name in the Tracker family tree there, so that's kind of a neat little nod there. Um, Miles Mayhem and Matt Tracker working together start up Mask. Um, if you go to the Racing Series episode for One Shining Moment, Miles Mayhem is stated to have helped get Mask started, which ties in beautifully to this comic. And in even more obscure references in the episode... The Crystal Skull, Miles Mayhem clearly recognizes Matt Tracker. But Bruce Sato, he doesn't recognize. Miles Mayhem doesn't know who Bruce Sato is. Because uh, Bruce Sato wasn't there at the beginning, if you go by the story, that he wasn't there when Matt Tracker was betrayed by Miles Mayhem and when Mask officially started up. So that all ties together beautifully. That brings to another point of contention with this comic. For this comic to basically work within continuity, though, for the cartoon, unfortunately, you have to ignore the fact the comic basically goes with the premise that Miles Mayhem knows exactly who Matt Tracker is. Um, if you watch the cartoon, you'll know that um, Miles Mayhem doesn't know who any of the mask agents are in the first series. That changes in the racing series, but... For this comic to basically fit anywhere within the confines of the first season of the cartoon, you really have to ignore that fact. You could somehow stick it between the racing series and the original cartoon series. It kind of slots in a little bit there. But that's kind of how it is. Um, just about every comic we're going to look at, U.S. and U.K., basically goes with the premise that the Mask and Venom agents are well aware of each other. And if that's a fact that bothers you about Mask then maybe the comics aren't for you. Um, it's just how it is. Um, so, there is one other point of contention that this comic does bring up in the fandom. Uh, Matt's brother Andy makes his only appearance in this comic. There's a long-running fan urban legend that Andy is the father of Scott Tracker. He is not. 
this is a false urban legend um, that's kind of circled around the internet. We really don't know who Scott's parents are. But nothing in this comic suggests that Scott Tracker is any way related to Andy. Scott is not in the comic. He's not mentioned in the comic. Um, Andy is described as a teenager. Um, so at oldest, when he dies, he's possibly 19, probably younger. So either a long, ups for Scott to be, for Scott to be Andy's son, you would either have to think that there's a large gap of time between when Andy had Scott and then when Matt started up, which would put Scott about 10 years old, or you... Andy would have had it as Scott when he was absurdly young. So it doesn't really fit the timeline. Um, it's a fan creation. I think people kind of look at Andy and, kind of, and Scott and kind of try to shoehorn it all together. Um, it really doesn't work. So um, it's a great little mini comic. It's only a few pages long, but definitely worth tracking down. All the mini comics are available online if you do um, Google searches for them. You'll be able to find them, the whole issue. Real easy, so um, they're really great. So uh, we're gonna look at the second one. This one is probably the weakest of the three. We have a monster from Venom. Um, this one I really don't have a lot to say about, to be honest with you guys. Um, it's a fun little story. Um, Venom basically steals the Loch Ness monster, brings it to a lake, and uh, Mask has to stop him. Uh, mostly it features Dusty and uh, Brad. Um, it's just not really anything really too exciting. There's a really neat scene at the beginning of the comic where Miles Mame is using his mask on a mannequin, a mat tracker. It's really a visually cool scene. But for the most part, this is if you're going to skip one, this is the one you're going to skip. There's really nothing... <sighs> of any real big significance that happens in that comic. So, it's cool, but if you're going to read one, definitely because it was Flaming Beginnings. And we're going to look at the last one real quick here. We have Assault on Boulder Hill. So, this, the premise of this story is, is basically Cliff Dagger creates a distraction, breaks into Boulder Hill, steals some of the masks. Um, he takes them to Miles Mayhem. They try to use them, find out they're booby-trapped. They abandon the masks. Matt and the mask agents recover their masks shortly thereafter. And then Miles Mayhem and Cliff Dagger launch an assault on Boulder Hill. Um, real nice artwork in this one. Real, some really cool scenes of Boulder Hill fighting. So this one I definitely would say check out as well. So really like the comic. It's really cool. So... Like I said, all three of these comics you can generally find online. Definitely look at the first one, because if you've only seen the Mask cartoon and you've never seen the comic, you're missing a little bit of the origin story of Mask. So, this is the only time in North America that we've actually gotten the uh, Mask origin story. There is a separate one in the UK. When we go over the UK comics, we're going to be covering that one. So, that one's really cool. And we're going to go over one last bonus comic for the day. We're going to look at Uncover a Mask Adventure and Discover the World of Mask. So this comic, I'm not really sure how it was released. I know I had it as a kid, and I've since reacquired a copy as an adult. It's a combination of a comic book and a catalog. Uh, the comic story basically covers Matt, Bruce, and Scott are... Out in the jungle, um, Scott wanders away, discovers Venom is uh, trying to steal some ancient ruins. Mask, Matt and Bruce come swooping in, and then they help rescue Scott, who basically Scott goes off to hide and singles, signals Mask with a kite. So it's a very short story. Nothing really of a whole lot of significance happens in the story. Um, the comic is really neat because... It's got the catalog afterwards. It's got a lot of pictures of mask merchandise. That wasn't necessarily the toys. We have things like the Halloween costume that you'll often see behind Bill in his uh, studio. 
um, the train set, the road race set, uh, books, toys, clothes. So it's kind of a neat comic. Um, I'm not aware if this one's available online, to be honest with you guys. Um, it's probably, if you're really into the toys, it's neat. Um, but really, for the most part, this is one you could probably give a pass to. Um, there's really not a lot of significant stuff going on in this comic. So, these comics all look like they were published by DC Publishing, who would go on to publish the regular mass comic books, the miniseries, as well as the regular series. Um, they do actually have a DC, um, subscription form in the front of the, the mini comic, so... They're really cool. The artwork in these comics is beautiful. Um, there's some really nice visuals. They're really worth tracking down. So, um, I really love these comics. So, this is a great place to start if you've never looked at a mass comic. Definitely check out the mini comics first. Like I said, they're free online. You can just look at the page. They're only a few pages long. You could probably easily read them within just a few minutes. So, definitely worth tracking down. So. Hope this episode's been really great for you guys. Um, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Our next portion I'd like to go over will be probably be coming in the near future, which should be um, the first four-part Mask miniseries, as well as the promo comic that promoted it. So um, let's all look forward to that. Um, this is Dave from MattTracker.com signing out, and have a great day.